ladies and welcome to Aseba Pukuri Institute. I am Marian Alantin and I will be your trainer facilitator for Pukuri NC2. Before we start, to make sure that everyone is here, please sign the attendance sheet. Okay, let me have the attendance sheet please. Raise your hand once I call your name. Miss Darren Hamora. Miss Hannah Grace Lantin. Okay. Now, let us start with a short introduction of our school. Aseba Kukiri Institute is a TESDA accredited training center that will help trainers like you to the completion of qualification in Kukiri and C2. Okay. Now, let's start our proper orientation for competency-based training for Kukeri NC2. I have divided our topic into nine parts. So, first, we're going to talk about the competency-based training, the 10 principles of competency-based training, the comparison of CBT and traditional learning, to be followed by the roles of a CBT trainer like me and a trainee like you, and the overview of Kukeri NC2 to be followed by the competency-based learning materials, the methodologies, and the evaluation system. Is that clear? Okay. So first, we are going to talk about the competency-based training. It is a training delivery approach that focuses on competency development of the learners as a result of the training. It has a few distinct characteristics, which is number one, it emphasizes most of what the learners can do. Number two, it focuses on the outcome rather than the learning process. And lastly, it concerns the attainment and application of knowledge, skills, and attitude. So now, we are going to talk about the principles of competency-based training. Number one, learning is based on competency-based curriculum, which is the CBC, which is derived from competency standards. It is a plan for a structured series of learning experiences towards achieving of competencies identified by the industry. Number two, learning is based on modular in structure. So, it is a qualification composed of set of competencies a worker should have. So, number three, learning is done by the learner at their own pace. So, in CBT, you will be allowed to advance on your own without having to wait for your classmates. You learn at your own Pace. So, number four, learning is based on the actual industry practice. And number five, training materials are di directly related to the competency standards and curriculum. So number six, assessment of learners is based on the collection of evidences. Training is based on and of the job components. So number eight, the system allows the recognition for prior learning or current competencies. Number nine, the system allows for learner to enter and exit the programs at different times and levels. And lastly, the approved training programs are nationally accredited. So do you have any question about the 10 principles of competency-based training? So if there's none, let us now talk about the comparison of competency-based training and traditional education. So it has a few distinct characteristics, which is number one, focus. So in Traditional learning, it focuses on managing instruction, while in CBT, it put emphasis on managing learning. So, number two, entry to training. So, in traditional learning, there is a fixed schedule for enrollment, while in CBT, it is flexible because the trainers can enter and exit the course in different times. So, number three, the coverage of materials. So, in number three, the, in traditional learning, um, similar materials are covered by the students at the same time and at the same pace. While in CBT, um, different materials can be tackled in the same program. So number four, transition. So in traditional learning, you basically learn in by group. While in the CBT, you are expected to learn individually at your own pace. So, number five, um, testing. So, in testing, there is a fixed schedule as a group in traditional learning. While in CBT, your schedule is based on your readiness. So, number 
six is feedback. So in traditional learning, it is little but continuous feedback. And while in CBT, there is the immediate feedback to the trainees. And number seven, so retesting. In traditional learning, retesting is often discouraged that, and does not allow retesting in traditional learning. But in CBT, um, it is encouraged and highly, highly recommended. So lastly, the availability of resources. So in traditional learning, it is available at a specific time. While in CBT, it is always available. So do you have any question with regards to the comparison of competency-based training and traditional learning? So if there's none, let us now talk about the roles of a CBT trainer like me. Number one, we determine what is to be learned. Number two, we stimulate trainees' motivation. Number three, we manage learning. Number four, we determine and solve learning problems. Number five, we evaluate students' achievement. Number six, we assist learners to, to obtain individualized rewards. And number seven, we assist trainees in designing a personalized plan of a study. Number eight, we install confidence. Number nine, we serve as a role model. And number ten, we spend time interacting with the students. And number eleven, help students who need help. So are there any questions or clarification with regards to the responsibilities of a CBT trainer like me? So if there's none, let us now determine the responsibilities of a CBT trainer like you. So number one, you select what you want and when to learn. Number two, you learn at your own rate within the guidelines. Number three, you request to receive credit for what you know. Number four, you choose how you want to learn individually. Number five, you are responsible for what you will learn. Number six, you decide when you are ready to perform. Number seven, then you develop personalized prescription for learning. Number eight, you compete against present job standards. And lastly, number nine, you know what to do to complete the program. So do you have any question with regards to the responsibilities of a CBT trainer like you? So if there's none, let us now go to the overview of the cookery and C2. This qualification consists of competencies that a trainee must achieve to clean kitchen areas, prepare hot cold meals and dessert for guests in various food and beverage service facility. So this qualification is packaged from the competency map of the tourism sector, hotel and restaurant. So we have three units of competency. Number one, the basic competencies with a nominal duration of 18 hours. Um, number two, common competencies with a nominal duration of 18 hours. And lastly, core competencies with a nominal duration of 280 hours. So after discussing the overview for Kukuri and C2, we are now going to talk about the CBLM. So what is CBLM? CBLM stands for Competency Based Learning Material. So CBLM is a student-centered learning approach that provides the students with learning tools they need to learn at their own pace. So they are free to make choices about the sequence of their learning. So CBLM has its parts. So Number one, the information sheet, self-check, task sheet, uh, operation sheet, job sheet, and lastly, the performance criteria checklist. Do you have any question about the competency-based learning material and its parts? So if there's none, so we're going to talk about the evaluation tools. So we have here three evaluation tools, which are number one, written test, number two, performance test. Under this performance test, we have demonstration method, observation method, and portfolio evaluation. And for the last part is the interview or questioning. So I will use these tools to monitor and assess your learning. So do you have any question with regards to the evaluation tools? 
It's okay. There, if there's none, please get your notebook and ball pen. I will take you to the different parts of our workshop for our tour. So first is this area. This is the Contextual Learning Laboratory. This area ensures that the underpinning knowledge, the science, mathematics, and communication principles as applied to the technology are applied to you. So next we have the Learning Resource Area. So, it will provide you with the knowledge requirements in the various modules responding to the competencies. Next, we have the distance learning area. Here, you can have no print and print media that you can take at home. So, next we have the quality control area. So, in this area, various tests are conducted. So, next we have the computer laboratory where you can where you can see an array of computer that you can use for word processing, Excel, Internet, and such. So last is the support area. This is the area which provides value-adding competencies for cookery and C2, addressing wow. underfeeding skills in the competency. Now, let's go back to the contextual learning laboratory. To our training, I have here data gathering instrument and self-assessment checklist. Don't forget to write your name and read the instruction carefully. This instrument will help me to determine your training gaps and current competencies. I will give you 15 minutes to answer. So, trainees, are you done? Okay. Let me have the. Let me have your answer. So, I also have here pre-assessment test. Don't forget to write your name and read the instruction carefully. This instrument will help me to determine the level of your knowledge. So, trainees, are you done? Please give me your answers. Thank you. So, you may have your lunch break for 30 minutes and take your meal. Please come back at exactly 10.30 a.m. So, welcome back trainees. How's your meal? As I have checked your data gathering instrument, self-assessment checklist, and pre-assessment test, I have found out that some of you are newly graduates while some of you have worked in the industry. Once I call your name, come with me for your assigned area and I will give you further instruction. Miss Darren Hamora, come with me at the learning resource area. Darren Hamora, here is a CBLM of prepared vegetable dishes. Read information sheet number 72-1. After you read information sheet, answer self-check. Then after that, you may check your answer on answer key, okay? I'll go back to you after you finish your task. So, Ms. Hannah Grace Lentin, stay here at the learning resource area. Now, listen to me as I discuss to you about preparing vegetable dishes. Ms. Darren Hamora, are you done with your task? Okay, may I have the CBLM? Wow, job well done. I will sign your TRB. And let me check your achievement chart. Now, come with me at the practical work area. So here are the tools and materials and supplies necessary on preparing vegetable dishes. Please wear your personal protective equipment first and let me demonstrate it to you. Alright, based on the performance criteria checklist, you were able to demonstrate the unit of competency which is preparing vegetable dishes correctly. However, you also have to make sure that you perform confidently. Let me give you more time to practice and then when you are ready, we can proceed with the institutional assessment. Let me check your achievement chart, chart for this. Ms. Darren Hamora, are you ready for the institutional assessment? Okay, so given the tools and materials you are required to demonstrate, you are given two hours to finish the demonstration. Is that clear? Okay, now you are finished with the demo. Let me ask a few questions on your product. Now, you may take your written examination at institutional assessment area, but please 
get written examination test and your answer sheet on trainer's resource area. How are you, Miss Hannah? Now you have watched the video presentation on how to prepare vegetable dishes. Please proceed to practical work area and wear your personal protective equipment. Then prepare tools, materials, and ingredients to be used. Now you are tasked to perform cooking pinakbet. Based on the performance criteria checklist, you were able to perform the task correctly. However, you also have to make that creativity is a must. Let me give you more time to practice tomorrow. Meanwhile, you can bring the CBLM and read it again or you can watch the video I uploaded in our website and then tomorrow when you are ready, we can proceed with the institutional assessment. Let me check your achievement chart for this. So, Ms. Samora, are you done with your written examination? Now, I will check it. So, you got a perfect score on your written examination. You also meet the required standard in making vegetable dishes. So, as a reminder, always bear in mind, safety first in handling all equipment. Based on my assessment, you are competent in the unit of competency. Congratulations! May I have your TRB? Let me also mark your progress chart as you have finished all the learning outcomes in the unit of competency and you have completed all the core units. Come back to learning resource area. Take your post-test examination then answer your training evaluation form please proceed to learning resource area for further instruction miss hamora are you done answering your post test and evaluation form okay miss hamora since you are done to all competencies required in the NC, be ready and prepared for national assessment that's all for today thank you for a job well done goodbye